Hello and welcome again to uh, Woodland Sticks. This will be part six. Last time I showed you how to bend the nose. So this time what I'll do is I'll finish off the nose to get a nice little shape into that. And then we'll go ahead and I'll show you how to drill the, the heel out and we'll fit it to a stick. So I'll make a start and just tidy up the nose bit first so you can see where I've got to go. I've got to take some of that away from in there in this top part and just get a nice even flow going round on there. So we'll pop him in the vise. I just want to open it up a bit because that's a little bit on the tight side. See how we're pulling together now. doing a nose really you can do it to any shape you like to sort of suit yourself so that's more or less done so now what I'll do is where I've been over with the old course file last time we'll take some of that away and I'll just show you a bit of how to actually finish it off so I'll go over the whole lot now with a, a finer fox I shan't do the whole lot because I've been here for quite a while doing that. So I'll take some away just to give you an idea of what, what I'm doing. So then I shall go over the whole lot like that and take it all down so I've got a nice 
nice bit of horn without too many scratches in it. Now I normally start off with a, a coarse sandpaper. This one is about 180 grit. So it's just a matter of let me put it up a bit so I don't take my knuckles off. This is a 180 grit, so that'll that'll shift a lot of them scratch marks quite quickly. And you can see a scratch mark, they show up as a bit on a bit of white. So every one of them has to come out. If not, you'll still see it when you've actually finished it off. Um, what are we up to now? Oh yes, that's a 240 grit now. Well, take it even finer. So you can see now I'm starting to get rid of all the scratches now. And then I finish off with a bit of 320. I find that's about as fine as I really need to go with this. Um, because I use a, a polishing wheel to uh, polish mine up. But you can do it with brasso or, or tea cut, anything like that on a cloth. But I haven't got time to mess with all that, so I'll use a, a buffing wheel to get the shine to come out of mine. Another thing is, don't forget, horn has got a um, got a grain to it, much the same as wood. So when you've finished your your stropping and doing, always run it with the grain. That way, if you leave any holes in it, any scratches in it. Um, that won't show too much so we're getting rid of all them white bits where they're deeper and we're now finished up with a, a quite a smooth surface so this is a buffing wheel and you use a like a wax with a grit in it uh, so that you just put a little amount of that onto your wheel and then Rub it onto my wheel. So you do exactly the same with brasso or tea cut. I suggest that I do quite a few, so this is by far quicker and easier to me. So a little bit of polish on it, and that's the result. So. You can see it doesn't take a lot of time, but it is time consuming. But so you have to make sure you've got rid of every little scratch and every little dent or whatever, because that will show up. But that's the sort of finish you're looking for. So you can do the whole lot, get all that ready. So we're leaving that in a square because that will be mounted onto the stick. And then we take this down. So that will do for that if you want you can do the whole lot I'm going to put it onto a stick so I was going to make mine a bit harder because I'll have to do it once I sign a stick but never mind so right now we'll drill out here so I always use a wooden dowel for mine I'll just get rid of this out of the way so I always dowel mine onto uh, the top which is like that, which is 13 millimeter. So I need to drill a hole into there 13 millimeter to take a dowel. So the way I do it is, it's a job to put it in a vise and drill down and get that dead straight. So your best bet is, all it is is a piece of anything that you can make an angle with. This. So that's my my driller jig. So I put a clamp onto here to hold that tight into my jig. I'll just make sure you get it right in. And another one goes that way to hold it in tight 
on the top. So that now is ready to drill. Now, I oh, should have a, a washer somewhere. I do my centre holes with, so yeah, that'll do. So all I use is a as a normal washer, smallish hole. If you, I lay it on the top there, if my cameraman can see it. Just lay it onto the top, and once I've got it squared all round the edges, I can just put a, a little dent in the top there with my bridle, so I can mark that. Now that's where my drill is going to start off, in there. So, pull that round and get this up. So now what I'm trying to do now is get everything to come into the middle. Oh, it's all that down. So now that's fairly well clamped in. So by that. I've got to go in straight now because I've got it up against here and there. So let's get things right. So that should do us. So just have a look, find something to test my depth with. Yeah, so that's our depth. I think I'll go just a touch, a little touch more. So I'm just say that's 13 mil. I'm, I'm drilling out here. Yeah? 13 mil. <laughs> I think 13 mil is about the right size for your dowel and everything else. So, right, so we drilled that out, and there's our hole. Now what I want to do is, some people put a little slither of uh, coloured horn, bone, or whatever else in there to make it an attractive-looking joint. So, I'm going to do the same just to show you how we do it. And I'm using a bit of ox horn, uh, so I've got the black in there which will complement that and the yellowy should complement with the stick. So that will just be glued straight onto there when I'm ready to glue it up. This has got to be dead flat, whether you're going to do an angled joint, which is cutting that way, it doesn't matter but it has to be dead flat. So when you put it onto the surface, everything is standing up straight. So as I say, and then we'll drill it onto there. So I'll now make a dowel, or show you how I do a dowel on a stick. So again, uh, a pencil. measure the depth of your hole. There's our hole. Right, so that's our pencil mark on. Now, I always use this low tack 
masking tape shouldn't stick too hard but I don't want it to stick hardly anything because that will tend to take the bark off so I normally rub it on my trousers just to take off what little tag there is on it so I go on to my pencil mark and I run a, a row of tape around that just gives you a, a line then to cut to so you know the depth of your your dowel pop it in there now I've got a very fine saw there very very fine cut on that so I just want to go and follow the tape all the way around Let's have it a bit looser so I'm not going too deep but I'm just following that tape so it gives you a quite a good guide as to where you're going that's enough now what I'll do another one in the middle and then that makes it a lot easier for making your dowel line all the way round now I'm going to like a little washer again to find the centre on the stick I tend to have loads of different sizes of washers so I'm looking for one that's going to give me a nice centre on my stick so just mark where that goes now when I'm cutting my dowel I know that that is the centre to me dowel all the while. Right, so I'm going to make a start with this. I'll just put that in in the voice. So I'm going to just take some of this away. And so I've got to keep my eye on that centre all the while to see that I'm keeping into the middle. that sent me all the while to keep into it. I'll take some of this away. Just be a bit careful with that one because you're going to hold you. my centre. I keep whittling away now, trying to keep everything nice and smooth as we go. And before you actually get to it, you want to test out to see where you are. Let's just take it out there and have a, have a proper look at it. So, let's round it off, keeping it into the into the centre. Alright, now give it a try. There's my thing. Alright, so I've got to do a fair bit as yet. So, round again. Try and keep the same size cuts each time you're going round. Slowly work your way round. Everything lays central. I'll give it a try again. No. We're slowly getting there, but as I say, you don't rush this bit. You've got to get that to go on there nice. And as I say, if you notice, I've got 
sort of pointing down, pointing towards the end all the while. So I need to just get that start. That's all I'm looking for really. It's just to get a get a nice start on there. Alright so on it goes. Right, so now we've got it started. So it's now starting to go on. Now what I like to do is I like to screw it on. So I'll just keep working it. So the hole now is actually showing me what I've got to remove. And the same here. Pencil line is still in the middle. So I can cut some more of this away. So that's round once with a knife. And I take that away. And what I'm doing now is I'm the grain is actually keeping me in line now for fitting it up. So let's keep going round. Right, so I need to go a bit deeper. A sharp knife is another handy tool as well. I'm leaving that a little bit fatter than this. So I'm now taking that from my line that the horn has done. That's giving me a nice guide. Right, so I've now removed all that bit, all that ledge that the horn gave me. So on it go again and screw again. So it's gave me another nose edge. So away we go again. And so there's no rush to get it on, but we when it does go on we want a good a good fit. So on again, screw it. So I've still got a ledge there, take it off. You can see the dowel starting to take shape now. So what I want to do now is to, to take some of that away with the file. So I don't want it, don't want that too tight on that dowel because if it gets too tight it's going to split the dowel up. Right, so we'll give it a try. Yes, right, so I snip on right on. Now, I'll tell you the thing I'd got to do now is I've got to take another bit away for my washer that I never thought about so I'm gonna do this my old way and just guess it I just want to take the thickness of that wash off. So.
so that's gone on there nice and then this will go over the over the top so that's that sort of put on now I've got a little tiny gap going round here and here so I need to take a bit more of that away so off come everything I just need to take some of this away just so as I can get a nice tight fit on it So that will go on to there like that. Now, to fit this together before we glue that up, we've already got our tape on here and that stays on till we've actually finished. But what we're looking for now is the nose on our stick has got to run directly down the centre of our shaft and we've got to have enough so we can take any horn away from our square bit. So we want to make sure we've got horn to do it with. So if you look at that, I've got a gap up here. So somehow I've got to turn that till I lose that gap at the top. So that doesn't look too bad actually because I've got daylight showing here and a bit of daylight up there so I'm going to have to take a little bit of that back away. So now I look down the whole lot and I'm just checking now that it's lying quite nicely down the stick. If it doesn't you can move it around a little bit and you'll see that nose will keep twisting from one side to the other. So it's getting everything right. Now looking at that, that to me looks right. So everything is lying down and that is coming straight down my stick. And I've got enough horn here to remove to get me down to stick level. So that's where that horn has got to go. So I've got nice clean joints here. Uh, now what I do is I want to put a mark on my horn somewhere. We'll go on here. I want to put a mark on there. I'll go right through that as well. But I need a pencil line in here. So when I glue up, everything is going to go together. So when I put the head on, everything now, I just go by these lines and that is it. Right, so now we'll have a go at gluing it up. I well, normally use two part epoxy resin. So before we do that, when you put the head on, it often works as like a piston. And you'll find your glue and an air pocket in your head will keep pushing it off. A simple little trick is just to put a knife in, run it down the side, and just take a little V, take a little V right out. Now that will allow any air that we have when we put it together to escape from there. So, so we'll use any epoxy resin that's good enough really. 
but this one is quite a quick drying one because I just want to show you a bit on how to file it down once done so I'll use this one that's, I think that's five minutes and make sure you do get equal parts of it or as near as you can and give it a real good mix I will stress you can't really mix this enough but it has to really get well mixed in with this epoxy it does go off when it says five minutes well, like this one is it does go off within five minutes especially if you're mixing up a large amount because it, it really gets quite hot so that should do that right, so I'll put a bit onto me onto me dowel and say make sure you get it in make sure you get it right into this bit and fill it all up nicely everywhere has got it you'll see your old wood chains right sorry about that but uh, the battery went on the camera and uh, so I've got the glue already mixed so I, I went ahead and put it all together so I'll show you what I've done I mean really there was no need for you to have watched it anyway I push it all back all together I put the glue in put them together and put me like me pencil line and that so everything lines up so now it's helped us a little bit because this has already gone off, it's already dried. So while it was charging up we stopped for a cup and I say everything now is dry. So what I'll do is I'll give it a little bit of a file down and show you how I take it down to the stick. So I, as I say I always leave it in a block. I tend to finish more, not quite as much as that, but get rid of all the rough and everything while I've got it loose and in a vice. But so to move things on, I put it on a stick, that's just going to make it a little bit harder for me to finish off, but it doesn't matter. So now what I'll do is I'll take some of that down to the stick and I'll show you how we do that bit. So I normally start, I want to get rid of that, the protruding bits on that collar, because that's going to be a bit in my way. And uh, I don't really want that jamming up in the voice so I'll just take some of that away and put it to where it should be on the thing um, do it that way What's that taken care of? Now I always start with the back portion, so I've got that into my voice, so that'll hold that nice and solid. So now what I'm after, I'll use a bigger one, I want to run that so I've got a little gap under here, if my cameraman can squat down, you can see there's a little gap showing there. So what I've got to do is, I've already got the same size gap there, so I need to take this a bit away, to match up with that. So I'll just take that highway off. That's the that looks like I've got a lovely white piece of a horn, white stripe coming in the horn. I don't know whether you can see that, but that's going to look really nice when it's finished. So I'm watching my tape all the while and taking this down fairly level. So I'm keeping the eyes just caught the tape. So I'm just there with that bit. So that's that bit done. Now I take it off and I like to go the other way. So now I take that again. So we have a look on the rod. 
So I'm now looking at that again to see about my gap. I've got a gap there, so I take some of that away and we'll be there. I just caught the tape there by accident but that's another thing where that tape comes in handy that just gives you a little bit of protection if you do have to slip a little bit with your, your file right so I'm down to here now I just want to check it again for level so I think I need a bit more off down this end of the handle rather than anywhere else so I need to take a bit of that away. It's a rounded file. Alright, I'm going to do that. So we check it all as we go. Right, so now it's getting a little bit tighter in here now. Um, right, so now we take this bit down. Again, we look at it, see where we are. So we're just touching there. We've got a bit of daylight showing there. So it's just a matter of taking from there to their off so So that means I'm down onto that now. So I'll have a look at it again and see how I am here. I just need to take a little touch off the middle there because I've got daylight showing here and here. So just need a couple of little stroke tape in the middle. That should do that. Well, it's got one side left. Again, have another look, see where we've got to take horn off. Again, I've got a slight gap there, so gap here. Need to take it's just the middle off, but not a lot this time. So I'm down now more or less level. So looking at that quickly, yes we've got it more or less to how we want it. Right so that's four sides done. Now we turn it into eight. So we now take that a bit away. But you need to be a little bit careful before you start it because that tends to want to splinter. So I normally start it off with a smooth file. Let's look at my edge down and I can normally get away with it. And again, keeping an eye on my tape and I'm looking that I've got an even 
run there. So I would say that's about five mil flat line. So that's even even sizes. Just keep it even all the way up and you won't be wrong. So again I'm keeping an eye on me tape, keep an eye on everything. Right, so I'm just down my tape. Now I've got a little bit there to take away, so we go into that with half around. Just take that away. Right, so now we do the same over the other side. Again, use your final file to get you started. we go with the big one. I'm oh, sorry, keeping that straight. sort of working it in now to me stick. Got the same distance flat there, same there, same there. So I'm working it down into eight. So now come a trickier one. Oh, that's gone in. Right, so now off the with the back again. Smooth fold to start with. See how I've worked that down as a row again. Now I need to follow that bit over. That's now running into there. So we turn it round. Let me try and get that bit in. I'm going to say, don't over tighten when you're putting it into there, otherwise you'll be damaging your bark. <coughs> Oops, if you hear that and see that, that's what happens if you don't take that first little bit off with a, a fine fold out. And sometimes they'll tear fairly deep. That's the way I do all my hands, whether it's ram's horn or buffalo horn. Always work them down into eight. down into eight so now we come out of the voice give it a bit of protection and I'll put a split hose pipe now we take these corners away now 
I'll just gently work the last shaken to get the final one. Quite easy now, quite straightforward. So I'm just taking them off. Round them into each other. A bit round there. So you can see me tape pulling back, so that means I'm there. Right, I'll just take a little rib out of there. to match that side up. sandpaper, get it nice and round, leave your tape till you've finished, till you're actually finished uh, before you remove any of that. You might need to go round and just take it off with a, your file. Um, just to make sure you're right down what you're looking for is a, a finish that you can't feel. So, you can just run around, keep a look at that and make sure you're clearing every bit of paper off. So you've got paper there, so there's a little step there somewhere. So you just run it around and you're removing your, your little bit of tape. So just like that. Now there's no step, nothing there. It's just a beautiful, smooth, finish so it's no different rubbing the stick you that's your finish so really i'll leave it all up to you now it's just a matter now of going around 
with your finer file, tidy that up, strop it all down and polish it up with either brass or teacup or on a, on a polishing wheel. So I think we more or less covered everything there is to cover with uh, working a buffalo horn. So good luck and uh, enjoy your stick making. Thanks